The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. And we're very lucky to have Barry, his incredibly knowledge about all sorts of things, but especially to come, especially to give us the latest, what I like to call the latest vi visit visa challenges and opportunities in Thailand, right? So uh, without further ado, uh, by the way, some people will have already been here for one of Barry's very informative talks. Uh, one thing I'll say, so I don't forget to say it later, is uh, you definitely want to go to pattayamail.com and subscribe to their daily uh, email and if it and it'll come and it'll give a summary of the most important new articles and all if, if Barry Kenyon has written one of them which he does a couple of times a week I think uh, definitely want to click on that and read anything that Barry Kenyon's wrote so handing over to journalist speaker bon vivant. okay no, great thanks for coming back Barry you're welcome good morning everyone um, it, if I seem to have to bob up and down um, <coughs> standing and sitting, it's because unlike most men of my age, and I'm 82 now, I don't suffer from high blood pressure, I suffer from low blood pressure, hypertension. It's very difficult to cure or address, and it's a bit bad for some reason this week, so if I sit down, it's to prevent my head spinning a bit. Okay, well, I'm told reliably that I've been doing these talks on immigration for 25 years, on and off. So I have a very important announcement to make this morning. For another 25 years, I can assure you. Uh, that, yeah, you're dead, you're dead right there. So um, the, another thing to bear in mind, I think, is when I talk about immigration, while I draw many sources from the immigration itself, I know some people there, not only in Patia either, uh, from the media sometimes, or from the uh, legal practice who still employ me as an honorary consultant for overseas cases, civil and criminal, not mostly about immigration, but about Thai widows trying to claim British and American pensions and arguments about um, uh, wills and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, <coughs> I've been doing, doing that uh, now for quite a number of years. But because I um, am connected with these other organizations informally, uh, please bear in mind that when I talk about immigration, I'm speaking only for myself, uh, not anyone else. Could we have number slide number one, please? If this works. Yeah. These are the trends in immigration, which I think everyone ought to be aware of, if you're not already. The first is that there's been a collapse of the tourist visa system in Thailand, deliberately, by this government to increase numbers. In the old days, uh, people in this room could always get 30 days on arrival as a short-term tourist, sometimes 45 days under the previous military government, 30 at the moment, and it's easy to get another 30 by uh, extending it immigration. That's, uh, you know, Europe, including Britain, in or out of the EU, America, Australia. But it wasn't true for most of the world and wasn't true for most of the countries that provide the bulk of tourists to Thailand. In the, when Poor Thai came to power um, after the general election here last May, uh, the Prime Minister has made it a personal crusade, uh, Seta Tawvisin, made it a personal crusade to collapse, insofar as he can, the visa system um, so that people from countries that provide most of the tourists no longer need a visa in advance or a visa uh, on arrival at the airport, which required a lot of filling in the forms. He's making these new countries visa exempt, like you always have been, most people in this room, providing you were just a tourist. And I'm only speaking of tourists, not people who are long term. We come to them uh, uh, later on. And so um, the countries that are now benefiting from visa exempt are seven or eight, but the three important ones are Russia, they don't need any documentation now to come in, and they get 90 days, not 30 even. Uh, China, a permanent arrangement there for uh, Chinese citizens, and they can extend a further 30, 30 days without any documentation, and India, 
But of course, the Thai government requires some sort of reciprocity, I can never say that word, in order to do this. So Thais can go to Russia, not admittedly for 90 days, they don't want to anyway, but for 30 without any documentation. The same with China, and very soon it will be true of India as well. So it's not a question of um, the Thai government collapsing the, vi the tourist visa system uh, without any payback. There usually is a payback, and this I think we need to bear in mind. And it is working because uh, Thailand now has the 63rd most valuable passport in the world. That means the m more countries that Thais can visit without a visa. That's what it's all about from the Thai government point of view. I believe the current total is just under 50 countries that Thais no longer require a visa to visit, including the major ones, as I say, Russia, uh, China, and India, and a handful of other countries as well. And it doesn't stop there. The Prime Minister wants to take it further. Um, he's been to Paris and Berlin this week speculating with the leaders there whether it uh, would be possible for Thais to go to EU countries, the Schengen visa of 27 countries, without a visa in return for those nationals coming here, we don't know for how long, as tourists, not as anything else, uh, without any documentation, which they can, which they, um, can anyway, of course, but it maybe give them some other perks, like longer or something like that. And you say, well, that'll be very difficult to achieve. Well, indeed it will, because the Schengen uh, 27 countries, um, once you're in the EU, you can go anywhere. There are no borders. Uh, but similarly, um, the Schengen um, visa people are keen that Thailand has its own form of Schengen arrangement. That is, four or five countries in ASEAN. You come to Thailand, you can also go to Cambodia, Vietnam, maybe uh, Malaysia, without further ado, a sort of mini Schengen. Now, these things seem very ambitious, I know, but you have to bear in mind that this morning in the Bangkok Post, sorry about the paper, the dog got it before I did its directly thing, uh, Macron backs PM Schengen visa waiver. So this morning in the Bangkok Post, the Prime Minister of France, not that he's that popular, is openly supporting the idea of, of uh, a visa exempt arrangement between the whole of the EU, which would leave Britain out in the cold, and America. Uh, and we'll have to see what happens to it. It might take, uh, you know, rather a long time. In the medium term, uh, these things will alter the tourist profile of uh, Thailand, as you already know, in Pattaya, and as I wrote recently in the Pattaya Mail in an article about sex. Uh, it, it's no longer Pattaya mainly about middle-aged and elderly white men, such as most of the people in this room, including myself. Um, it's a, a diversified market now. You all know that, so I'm not going to speculate on it further. But it, it's one of the prime agents for changing the tourist profile uh, of Thailand. The destruction, if I, I mean that, it not mean that in a pejorative sense, the ending of uh, visa requirements for tourists, I repeat, I'm only talking about tourists, from more and more countries in the world. Um, I, I think it's uh, within possibly 12 months, you may well see that it goes a lot further. So um, those are the tourists, they don't need an entry visa more and more. The countries that do need entry visas, and that's most countries in the world do require an entry visa to come to Thailand, mainly in Africa and Latin America, some parts of Asia, but they're not providing the numbers of Thai tourists, they're providing a small number. So in terms of those arriving at the airport and the borders, it's getting on for 90% of people who actually arrive here, ra rather than what countries they come from, who uh, don't require any documentation as a tourist. So it's quite a remarkable transformation of, this, uh, of the per Thai administration within a remarkably short period. I mean, uh, in this time last year, no one would have speculated that all this would be happening. The second trend that, that I discern in immigration at the moment is more discretion at branch or officer level. Uh, I think all of you know that if you go to Phuket immigration, you might not get the same as you uh, in Pattaya immigration in terms of detail. The rules remain the same, how many days you get in an extension and so on, but the documents that you have to provide for different sorts of visas and services such as uh, um, uh, Ekasantiyu, um, 
let, uh, the document that shows your address that you need for all sorts of purposes, like opening a bank account and all that. That will vary increasingly from uh, office to office and even individual officer to officer. And there's nothing much you can do about it, only be aware that if you move to another part of the country, it might be requiring a different set of documentation uh, that you need. Um, to give you, you already know, I think, that if you have a, if you're going to buy a condo in Udon Thani, then you have to go to the immigration if you need a letter proving your address in Udon Thani. You can't do it here. A lot of people get tangled up with applying for uh, driving licenses here because they're very strict in the driving license office. Proof of your address, the address must be in Shambury for the immigration to give you a letter. So all that is true. What can you do about it? Nothing. You can only keep reading the updates that appear uh, in the press or um, um, sometimes uh, meetings here about the discretion at branch or officer level. Finally, it should be said that at immigration now, there are many people wearing an immigration jacket who are not, of course, immigration officers because there's a, a, a big use now of civilian people, particularly the young men and women you see in immigration in Jom Tien. Uh, they're, they're not necessarily training to be immigration officers. They are employed, as it were, as civilians under the supervision of, of immigration officers. This also can lead to some tangles, of course, um, misunderstandings over language and all the rest of it. It's a trend, nothing much we can do about it, but don't worry, everyone has it. There is also a reliance on new technology more and more in immigration matters. You might wonder the, if the destruction of the, that's a bad word, if the ending of the tourist visa requirements for, for so many tourists is a good or a bad idea, won't it lead to a lot of people flooding the country who shouldn't be here? Uh, well, not really. I mean, it might do, but there's no reason for that would happen because the new technology now in use in immigration stations all around the world, including Thailand, allow anyway for the same sort of checks to be made on a computer as people arrive as was ever made when they had to apply for a tourist visa, I repeat again, in advance. Namely, have you ever been in trouble in Thailand before? Have you ever been before the courts? If you have, then you would not be allowed in, at least uh, you shouldn't be allowed in um, if you've been in trouble before, unless you've got a certificate of exemption or something special. That can be done by machine, doesn't need a person or a document. Automatic, you can find these things. Or uh, uh, the, the other thing uh, on the computer would be if you wanted by a Thai court, did you skip the country last time and and managed to get out through a border post by swimming across a river or something and you've come back, would it show up? Yes, it would. People wanted by the Thai courts would automatically figure on that, on the immigration computer. So, um, and whether you wanted as well by Interpol internationally, if you're an international tourist, would also show up. Those were the only three things that were ever checked anyway for tourists by and large worldwide, let alone just in Thailand. Have you been in trouble before in this country? Are you wanted by a Thai court? And uh, have, are you wanted significantly by serious offenses by overseas? And this uh, uh, can be done by machine. Indeed, many people believe that in 10 years you won't be carrying a, a passport at all, that it, all the information will be, and there are trials going on for this anyway. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. There are trials going on anyway to, uh, to have um, uh, seamless travel, as it's called, with no passport. All the information is on your mobile phone, and the details about any visas you need will be found on apps that, that are issued by the relevant authority. Um, I don't know if it, it's true in 10 years, but that's what many people believe. Uh, travel is moving now at such an enormous speed um, that we're moving to a situation where human beings are hardly necessary, as it were, other than to maybe to stop you if you're doing something wrong. So that's another trend, and uh, Thailand has always been at the forefront of using new technology in immigration. As early as 1977, for example, they were, they were wondering about whether to, on the computers, be able to deal with uh, biometric passports. You know, Thailand has a very good record of being upfront about all these things believe it or believe it not. Another 
trend in immigration at the moment are outside partners involved in visas. Most people believe that all visas are given by the immigration. Well, sort of, but not really. Um, there are an increasing number of visas now that use other partners. If you are interested, for example, in the LTR, the long-term residence visa, which is 10 years, complex it is because it caters for different markets, Retire wealthy retirees, you've got to be on at least $80,000 a year, um, or, or heavy investments by business people, um, global uh, citizens, I'm never sure of what a global citizen is, lots of categories, but all of them eligible for 10 years. And the bonuses of the LTR are substantial. Uh, you never ne don't need to worry about whether you're bringing, bringing in income from overseas, a thing that worries a lot of people in this room. What will I have to, will I have to fill in a tin, you know, a tax identification number next year? Will I be taxed on my old age pension? LTR, exempt. So, you know, and they don't suffer high rates of tax either, the maximum 17% on an LTR. They're looking mainly there at business people uh, and the like. So LTRs are very expensive, but my goodness, they bring a lot of uh, benefit. Now, the LTR, you don't apply to the immigration. You apply to the Board of Investment. Most people have hardly heard of it, but it's arguably the most significant economic powerhouse in uh, Thailand today. It, it, it also can uh, validate businesses um, with uh, different rules from most work permits. Most work permits require you to have at least four Thai employees working under you or with you with the BOI work permit. The rules are quite different. You don't necessarily uh, need any, anyone w a Thai working with you, providing you have the LTR visa as well. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on there. The point I'm making is it's no longer, if it ever was, true to say that the immigration controls. They have to be consulted, of course, but the BOI is the place where you collect your visa eventually. And uh, there are other uh, um, um, visas, even the elite visa, which many of you have. Yes, the immigration have to control it, but that's not. It's the TAT, the Tourist Authority of Thailand, that does all the publicity about it. This has pushed and pushed and pushed to uh, make this visa popular and as you know your most of your correspondence if you obtain the ta the um, uh, the elite visa will be with tat not with the immigration although they're involved new visas coming along all the time also require the participation of third parties did you read recently that thailand's about to introduce a martial arts three-month non-immigrant visa will be awarded by immigration departments um, abroad if you want one, but you know, you've got to prove that you're really into martial arts, uh, which I don't know much about. I always thought Kung Fu was prawn curry in an Indian restaurant, but it turns out to be something different. Uh, and and th th you know, the, the Kung Fu Association here is actively involved in this visa, you know. Another one might be medical visas. There are, although they're not really necessary, there is, are visas available for people who want to come here to have operations and, 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 and or one breast is bigger than the other. Or you want breasts when you haven't got any at the moment. All the rest of it, cosmetic surgery. There are uh, medical visas for that, but they involve the active cooperation of hospitals in it. So the basic point being made that outside partners now are important in visas, not necessarily the bureaucracy, which most people assume is limited just to the immigration. And finally, the final trend, I think, is, and you will all know this, that in return for the collapse of visas, uh, there is a, 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 an emphasis now by the government wants to know where you're sleeping more or less all the time. And I think you're aware that there are uh, two forms that test that on a regular basis, the TM30 and the 90-day um, report your address. Next slide, please. I hope it, yes. So this is the, oh, it, it's done it the other way around. Okay. So the TM30, just very briefly, the TM30 is a form that was devised many years ago, and the idea is that within 24 hours, the immigration know where you are. If you look at the TM30, 
it says on it you must report within one day. Now they're not too strict about that, but how strict they are varies from office to office and what time of day it is and whether the officers recently had a coffee break, you know, but it's there. You shouldn't, in theory, have to bother about it, people in this room. It should be done if you're in a hotel by the hotel on uh, online uh, TM30, which they can do, or in a condo if the condo management do it. Uh, properly, uh, but it doesn't always work that way as many of you know and if you really can't get a TM30 done for you by your host, whoever the host chooses to be, you have to do it yourself and if you don't do it yourself and turn up and they find out then you'll be fined 1,600 baht. It is rather unfair and you need to prove what that residence is. So many people turn up now at the immigration with like a, a business card, you know, just to, like that some people carry or their address written on a bit of paper. It's not about saying what address you have when you move to Thailand, it's about proving it, at least proving it within the uh, limits of what you can prove. That's why you need to uh, bring with the TM30 either uh, the, the online receipt which you've got from the hotel if they've really done it, or your blue book, uh, house book, with. It will own by, t we'll, we'll have a Thai name in it, so the Thai needs to provide his or her ID, or the yellow book, quite useful the yellow book, many of you know what it is if you don't find out, and the pink card which enable you to use those documents for all sorts of uh, purposes. Um, and so the TM30 um, is really was devised when, it, when everyone was a tourist. Do you need to worry about it if you're on, let's say, a one year, as I know many of you are, one year extension of stay? Well, not necessarily every time. Um, the problem is that when you go for a service in immigration, like you might be opening a bank account and need a letter for that, or you might be needing an extension, a one year extension in the case of the, what I've just mentioned, then increasingly they are asking for the most recent TM30 since you last came in the country. So th that's where you'll find when you're renewing your, your one year retirement visa, say, or marriage visa or other sorts of visas, they want to see a TM30 in your passport and as part of the bureaucracy. I don't think it's fully compulsory yet, but I think it will be becoming compulsory. Many of you will recognize it. The TM30 receipt should be in your passport, ideally, and you should renew it, ideally, every time you leave the country. Easy for me to say that because I no longer leave the country much. Without that receipt in your passport, uh, you could have a problem, not in itself, but if you need to go to the local immigration for a service, and the same if you're a tourist. A tourist coming in who didn't have one, never heard of it, nothing would happen. They don't, they don't check it at the airport as you're leaving. I've told you what they check at the airport you know, 10 minutes ago. They don't check whether you've done 90 days or a TM30. But supposing that tourist wanted another 30 days, then they'd ask for it. And that's where the fining comes in, where it's not been done. You also use this form, TM30, by the way, when you uh, change your address. Next, please. Hopefully, it'll be the 90 days. Next slide, please. Oh. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, just quickly again, the 90-day report. You don't need... This is only applies to people with long-term visas because most people have to leave the country after um, uh, 90 days anyway. But on lo the expats... It's a window of opportunity that whereby you do the 90 days. Um, it has to be two weeks before and one week after the day when you last came into Thailand or when you last submitted uh, the TM47, the 90 day form. So it's really, as it says there, 86 to 97 days. If you've been in Thailand 97 days and you're leaving on the 98th day, don't bother. It, it, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, not one day, it's nothing to do with visas, the 90 days, it's checking your address and um, y not everyone has to do it, by the way. People on the LTR that I mentioned before don't have to do it. 
people on a four-year smart visa, which you may not have heard of. It's a new technology visa for business people. Don't have to do it. Permanent residents don't have to do it. So not everybody, but where you do, you know. The universal fine, if you breach the regulations, is 2,000 baht. And you may be aware, I'm sure you all have receipts, so many of you do, of the TM30. you'll notice that it has a barcode on it. The idea of the barcode was so that you don't have to keep going back every 90 days and you could just do it either um, uh, easily um, by just going to the immigration showing the barcode. At the moment, uh, many of you are asking this, why has that been dropped? It's because of a new computer system that Bangkok insisted that immigration officers um, all over the country introduce. So um, you have to turn up in person or do it online because the new computer system doesn't recognize you if you just use a barcode. So it's one of those, you know. Whether it'll go back to being easier with a barcode, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, nobody really knows. A lot of online reporting systems uh, with it. If you change your passport, for example, it's, uh, the new system doesn't seem to know that you've changed your passport and if you try to do it online you may get a rude note saying you can't do it you know because it's not you uh, if you've changed your passport you may find you don't even have the option of doing it online but you'd have to turn up some people have no trouble doing it online normally and other people like me have never managed it maybe in the discussion later you could give your own experience there it's always been a mystery to me how people do it. There is a sort of connection with the TM30 as well, the other form we mentioned a moment ago. Increasingly, the, the people, uh, the young girls who are receiving your uh, TM, uh, receiving your 90-day form, increasingly are saying, "Where's your TM30?" You know, the, to go with it. So, so that although it's again unofficial, it's better. Uh, for what's coming ahead, I think, over the next year or two. It's better to make sure you do the 90 days when you should and make sure you have a recent TM30. I think you save yourself a lot of trouble, I think, if you do that. Okay, next, please. So, extensions of stay for one year. Many of you have this for retirement. I'm not going through all the rules with that. Uh, but uh, except to say that uh, um, there are, it is the most popular of the uh, one-year extensions of stay. Um, the main debate about it is medical insurance. If you have started off your retirement visa or your non-immigrant visa at an embassy abroad, a Thai embassy, by re re getting, let's say, an OA visa, as they call then you're stuck with medical insurance and the need for it for as long as, you, not just the first year, but forever. Whereas if you come on a tourist visa here, go to the local immigration with the right documents, they'll give you a, a, an O, three months, not OA, O, uh, non-immigrant visa, and then extend it for 12 months and you don't need medical insurance. I think many of you are aware of the difference between O visas and, and extensions and OA. The issue is that worries people, are they going to bring in compulsory medical uh, certification for, uh, for, for all types? Um, there is no sign of it, is all I can say at the moment. Uh, uh, it's a debate that goes on and on. One of the problems with it is that a lot of medical insurance claims for serious accidents, like you know heart transplant or giving you a new leg, fail anyway. There's a lot of evidence that about 20% of, of, of insurance claims um, are not met in full or are not met at all. And there's also the business of old men who are very rich but can't get insurance because they're too old or they're ill. You know, what should you do with them? They're often wealthier than the rest of us put together. Are they really going to be kicked out of the country? There's a lot of debates of, about medical insurance. The general rule, you should all, everyone should have medical insurance. Yes, we all know that. The, 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 that's the advice given to everyone. But when you look at the detail, and the devil always lurks in the detail, it becomes a bit less clear, I think. But anyway, the retirement visa there. There's the one-year extension of stay based on marriage. For those who, who are uh, heterosexually at the moment, it might come in for gay people later this year. No one's sure. Uh, usually, 
the Thai foreigner and a Thai lady, but sometimes the other way around, there are Thai uh, ladies who marry foreign husbands. This visa is not much used by anyone who is uh, over 50, because you would be eligible for a retirement visa over 50, and there's no benefit particularly with the marriage visa, except a, a little bit of an advantage if you're also going to work, but it's not, not terribly significant. Uh, and uh, um, you need a lot of documents for the marriage one, including people who can attest that you uh, are really in love together. Uh, they might get a visit from the immigration police checking whether your socks are in the same drawer as her knickers or whatever, you know, the, this kind of thing, checking up. And as a result, a lot of people, I don't say all, but many people don't like it, and they go for the retirement option, even though the money in the bank or the, uh, I I the income that you require is, is more, of course, for retirement than marriage. Um, as, as all of you know, 400,000 over 800,000, but then you might find some kindly soul that might lend you the money anyway, so there we go on with all that debate. So that's the marriage one. Education used to have one-year visas, it doesn't anymore. During COVID, there was an awful palaver over education visas with Chinese people claiming to have been studying in Thai for um, you know, 10 years and they couldn't even add up one to 10. You know, you remember the scandals that were in the paper with Chinese mafias and all sorts of things. The maximum you will get for this sort of education now, the sort of thing any, here, any, but any foreigner like us would be interested in would be three months. And it's wise to keep papers if you're applying for an education visa that you really are studying. You may be asked later if you want to change to something else though some people who have applied for elite visas have had trouble when their previous visa was education in case it was fake or a fraud, you know, um, and so um, uh, uh, they're not as important as they were for people, older people, like even people our age uh, would often get an education visa uh, and never go to school, you know. That sort of thing's become a lot more iffy now, a lot more difficult to do. I don't say it's impossible. This is Thailand, but pretty tricky, I think, uh, to do with that. And then there's um, employment. Um, the rules for employment are basically that you should either uh, work for someone who will get you a work permit, and in, there are two sorts of work permits now, the old traditional one and the BOI uh, is a different uh, rules. D don't believe employers that tell you not that it would apply much in this room, I think, don't they? Believe people who tell you they will get you a work permit later, they often never do and so on. Uh, a lot of uh, people being uh, led astray by promises. Uh, you can, on the other hand, uh, form your own company with uh, a couple of ties and put in an investment and that's how you open restaurants and that sort of thing. And uh, that, that's popular in, in Patia, not that difficult to arrange. First, you have to arrange to register your company if you start one in the business uh, development office of which there is one in Naklua and you've got to register for income tax and all the rest of it but it, it, it's okay. I put the uh, the photograph which seems to have disappeared, I saw it a moment ago of, uh, uh, the, uh, of uh, a lawyer, there he is, yeah, he's the, uh, the, the other is the uh, uh, Thai lawyer for whom I'm an honorary advisor for overseas cases, Jessup Bourne Bunag, who has offices next to the immigration. I put him up there because you uh, see all these um, um, locals queuing up at the immigration or our offices nearly every day from Burma and Myanmar, Laos and Cambodia. And these are the local workers that we heard a bit about last week by Phil said many of them were abused and you know ending up in unmarked graves and, and all sorts of awful things. I think the ones that are legal who have to register in our office by an outsourcing arrangement with the immigration, I don't think they, 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 they suffer so much from that. It's the undocumented ones I think who just come into the country understandably fleeing the trouble in Myanmar and um, don't realize what to do who get caught. But there are legally registered in Patia alone, about five, in just this area, you know, 5,000 or so of these workers from Myanmar, uh, Laos and Cambodia. And as Phil said last week, you often don't know who they are, because Laos in particular, they speak Thai almost as, just as well as Thais do. So you can be served in a restaurant, 
or you might um, somebody might knock one off his motorbike or whatever and he swears at you in Thai but he may might be Lao there are, there are many of them you often don't recognize either where they are there are large numbers of them uh, on the roads at the moment who are trying to repair you know all without going on about it you know all the trouble there is with road repairs in Patia in Offset and John Tien who are the people actually digging the holes under supervision not ties the, and city hall doesn't employ foreigners it's all done on a franchise basis to tie employers who are then responsible for getting the workers over 5,000 of them and they're the ones uh, that you see as you swear at as you're in a queue for half an hour on the MTM 2 road so you know they've affected the economy here uh, quite seriously there aren't nearly enough of them there's a, a severe shortage of uh, of, of, of manual workers which is what the the memorandum of understanding between Thailand and these local countries is all about it's all about uh, uh, manual work it's not skill work and uh, it's limited the arrangements are limited to them with a few Vietnamese also uh, managing to squeeze in we need more because Thailand because Pattaya is a booming city and there are more and more places all the time being uh, um, built people needed to carry concrete but they're also in factories on farms and as I say repairing the roads you don't even probably realize that they're not ties but you no know, ties repair roads or very few they don't like uh, to do that sort of thing as was said last week and so we need a lot more of them in order so there we are that's the um, ne next slide please Longer term visas, there's the elite visa, many of you know about that, five to 20 years. The most popular one is the just five years in and out when you like, and it costs uh, 900,000 baht, started off at 5,000. Many people um, like the elite as because of, uh, it also gives certain perks at the airport and that sort of thing, and, and, and valuable. Um, it's the most popular at the moment of all the uh, more than one year visas um, and enough people in this room know about it that if you ever wanted to have it as a topic I'm sure you could handle it in house the long term residence is also um, uh, I mentioned before a long term visa it's pretty expensive and complex and you go to the BOI uh, to uh, do it not the immigration I explained before um, but it has many perks and uh, I suspect once the income tax thing becomes a bit clearer about overseas income coming into Thailand are you taxable once the fog is cleared from that I think you'll find people with the money will opt for that visa on a big way there is also a smart foot visa a four-year visa which doesn't require you to report to the 90 days uh, unlike the elite visa which does but it's really for people working in the Eastern Economic Corridor, which you don't particularly notice in Pattaya, or, although it's benefited from it by the, uh, beach, uh, the beach improvements and so on. But move out of Pattaya, and it's an industrial hinterland around here, particularly going to Rayong. And uh, if you ask all, how has all that happened, it's the Eastern Economic Corridor, a complex, much misunderstood subject, which I'm delighted now to pass on to another subject. Okay, next one, please. Here are just a few, finally, miscellaneous, or nearly finally, miscellaneous uh, issues, overstay issues. I just point out that if you're three months or less overstay, you can pay at the airport or at the, at the immigration. Uh, it doesn't count as a criminal offence. Once it's more than 90 days, you'll find it much more difficult. I don't say it's impossible uh, to avoid deportation and blacklisting above 90 days, but they're very difficult and not a good idea so it's the, the key about overstay is a maximum of 20,000 baht but not more than three months but it's not a good idea at the best of times because it is the serious ones are recorded by the immigration computer that's not to say you'd be stopped from coming again but over 90 days you certainly would there are pilot schemes in Bangkok to extend uh, visas uh, by filling in forms and doing it online without turning up at the immigration uh, not particularly for retirement extensions but the 30 days need another 30 days those sort of people 
these uh, uh, pilots have not been extended to Pattaya or any other place outside Bangkok and there's no sign that they're going to be so when you hear rumors about you might not have to go anymore uh, yeah, I think that's not true there's the use of agents um, I think you've always to remember with the use of agents that uh, it's common throughout Southeast Asia indeed when I lived in, uh, in in Cambodia and I had a permit there for a time to work there um, and I went to the immigration they told me to piss off they said we don't want to know you you go to the agents on Karl Marx Avenue you know and so on as strong as that they didn't want to bother so it's a common thing throughout Southeast Asia when I was in Vietnam I noticed that travel agents were stamping passports I never asked what they were doing so it's quite common agents can be useful but most of the work of agents is actually because people are mystified by forms and that sort of thing and don't mind paying for the extra they can also help with the paperwork for longer visas but it's up to you really I always put it and, the, and they vary agents according to how good they are and whether they know what they're doing um, and these are matters that uh, you have to sort out for yourself you can't compare one with another I, I always put it this way all of us are economy class when we go to renew our visas or need to deal with immigration business class you pay more you get certain bonuses but as we all know business class on the airlines varies which airline it is uh, when you transfer stamp to a new passport when you have an old and a new you need to go to the local immigration or the office where your visa is to do that uh, they, they no longer require a letter from your embassy mainly because the embassies won't do them anymore so there's only a one form which is available at the immigration or the office next door you fill in about your old and your new passport do the right photocopies produce two passports and you'll get your old stamp put in the new passport certificates of resident uh, uh, um, for um, opening a bank account or needing to some other purpose like um, driving licenses or you've just bought a condo and they want to address all that sort of thing they're only issued in Thai now not in English so if you need it for an English purpose you need somebody you know you need to send it somewhere where they don't speak Thai you would need it translating by, tran by translation office um, if you're really stuck there is one next to the immigration in the office I work for they don't do any different from anyone else 500 baht a page I think but it does need doing don't send uh, if the translations needed make sure it's an agent that's authorized to do it okay and the lastly foreigners on income tax coming up I don't want to drag you through all this this is the thing everyone's worried about of course will I be paying tax I just make a couple of simple points to you in conclusion um, uh, 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 about this firstly it Th this business about foreigners paying am income tax on money transferred from overseas from January this year uh, it cannot have anything to do with what visa are on and people who tell you otherwise I'm afraid are uh, not, not being honest or they don't know just because you have a one-year visa let's say that it, it just it, 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 eligible you are eligible to be in Thailand one year elite retirement and so on doesn't mean to say you are there are qu quite a few married men who married to Thai ladies who have the marriage visa for example one year who don't stay here anywhere anything like 12 months they just find it convenient to have the visa they're under 12 months many many people with elite visas uh, do it being flit in and out of the country all the time particularly Chinese and business people it doesn't mean to say because you have a visa that could be 12 months it automatically means that you are uh, so they couldn't possibly say things like everyone on a retirement visa has to do this and the other some people are not uh, not here for six months and if you're here for less than 180 days you're not covered anyway uh, by the new tax regulation and the other thing I'd want to say about uh, income tax is don't do anything don't rush to do anything now you know the, if, if, if you whether you have accessible income or whether your income is non accessible if you send it overseas to this country it's only started last January it's only been in operation two and a half months nothing happens no tax is paid nothing happens to your money in the bank if you are shown to be eligible to have to pay it or even if you're not if we're not sure if we'll all have to fill a tax form in or not whatever 
nothing happens till January to March 2025, which is when you fill a tax form in, if you have to fill one in, recording the income from overseas in this calendar year. So what's the great rush to, you know, there's another nine months. On a very interesting interview with a senior tax official with uh, the uh, Swiss ambassador, which is available on YouTube, you can find it quite easily, he said a few interesting things. The Thai, uh, uh, the man from the Inland Revenue, the man from the Internal Revenue Service, he said, for example, all the forms that require you to um, apply for a TIN, a tax, reg in, uh, tax registration number, or to fill in the forms are in Thai. He said, this won't do, we're going to have them translated into English and with a commentary. Now, I'm, I'm pretty interested in that, you know, a commentary from the Inland Revenue at the time when they published the form. So before I put my name down with lawyers in Bangkok to receive newsletters or pay them money or whatever, you know, I think I'd just wait, you know, I don't see what the rush is. Um, I do know that I personally have no tax to pay January to March 2025, not a penny, I know that, because I did move money over from England in December 23, before it started, enough to cover me for this year, together with bits and pieces I may earn here. And so um, I, I know that I've not one penny, not one baht, of entered Thailand from en overseas in my case. So if, I fill a, if I'm told to fill in a tax identification number and do a tax form, yeah, I will do so if I'm ordered to do it and we don't know yet. But I know now I won't pay any tax. Nothing, nothing to write down. Nor do you know if you'd have tax to pay, even if you receive pensions and from overseas, old age pensions and that sort of thing, because we really don't know. The taxation, double taxation treaties, they're often waved about. Double taxation treaty saves me from paying tax here. Well, that's always said by people who haven't looked at it, <laughs> double taxation treaty. It's not easy reading. There are 61 of them for different countries, and they mostly ignore pensions and and the right. In the British one, for example, has a big section on uh, uh, petroleum tax, which doesn't apply to anyone here importing petrol, and nothing on old age pensions, state pensions, nothing. Doesn't mention them at all. So wh what good is that if you are on a state pension? The American one does say that your social security payment is only payable in America, but it has nothing to say about most pensions. I think we have to wait and, and later in the year, in the full knowledge, there's nothing you can do at the moment anyway. Thanks very much. So w when you were talking about extensions, you didn't mention that uh, like a retirement visa, you extend differently than you, you would an, uh, an OA visa, uh, which you obtain uh, outside of Thailand. Um, um, I know for a fact, and I've done this, that uh, um, for an OA visa, I had to make a border run to uh, Cambodia to be able to extend it. The local immigration office would not extend um, an OA visa. But an O visa, which is a retirement or non-O visa, um, you, you can just go to the local immigration office and get that extended. I, I think I might be able to answer that partly. When you get an OA visa, which is unfortunately what I came in on, every time you come into the country, you get automatically get 12 months. So if, if there's only a day left on your visa and you leave and you go to Cambodia and you come back in, they'll give you another 12 months, correct? So effectively, it's a two-year visa. Uh, if I can answer your questions. First of all, you and I had a discussion. This individual told me before, just before the meeting started that uh, he was on the OA visa, and in order to avoid the health insurance, he left the country. Did you say that? You left the country and came, well, but I think you said you left the country, got an O visa, came, oh, yeah, I was mistaken on that. Yeah, I switched over to an O visa, but as it relates, it gets a little more complex, and if people are interested, they can come and ask specific questions. Many of you know that I try to keep up with immigration issues. In fact, uh, Barry and I uh, keep in touch with each other on certain issues, so, et cetera, and uh, our website does have 
a lot of information, but the OA visa is issued as multiple entry. It's good for one year, and during that year you can leave and come back, and every time you come back you get a 12-month stay. But after the one year of the visa, not the permission stay, the visa, it expires. Then you have to get a re-entry permit, and then you have to start extending it at Thai immigration. It requires a health insurance, and you're still required to have the health insurance when you extend it. For those on a non-O visa, as Barry explained, you don't have to have it. And myself, I'm on a non-O, and I extend every year, and I don't have to, quote, prove I have health insurance. Uh, but anyway, uh, in a few minutes, I'll, we have time, so I'm going to elaborate, if Barry doesn't mind, a little bit on some of the things he said. But I'll let people ask questions first. Uh, yeah, you leave the country and come back on a no visa, which is what I'm planning to do, right? So. The only one way to get rid of an OA visa, which people want rid of because of the medical injury, is to leave the country. It doesn't matter what you come back with. If you come back with an OA visa, then you're ready to get a... An, uh, but if you can come back with the 30-day on arrival, is okay as long as quickly you get the documents together and apply at Patier Immigration for non-immigrant O. Depends. Um, I'd, I'd like Barry. I'd like to just address um, TM30s. Uh, I've been in and out of Thailand uh, three times in the last four months, and each time I've trundled off and re registered my TM30. Now, on the last Glad. occasion, on the first of March, I trundled down with my paperwork. And I was told very specifically that as a condo owner who's using the same address, I do not have to report a TM30 provided I keep the TM30 receipt from my previous registration. So I don't have to go there anymore. Now I've seen various conflicts on the forums with people saying that is the case, that isn't the case. Well, you're okay. You own your own condo, and they've made a note of that, that you're in the same address all the time. Many people having one-year extensions of stay based on retirement, that's not the case. They're moving around from place to place. They're the ones, I think, I did say earlier that not everybody needs a TM30 to renew a retirement extension of stay, but some do. You've probably, you know, coincidentally hit on one of the reasons why some do and some don't and that's the whole story of immigration it's rarely universal thanks Barry uh, lovely informative talk uh, so my question is I was given by the bank many years ago a TIN number I'm not exactly sure how many times I've used it, but I used to go down and claim my tax back from the tax office, the 15% that they deduct when you have investment or in your bank account. Uh, I haven't done it for the last couple of years. It's only a few thousand baht, but it does give you a free meal. <laughs> and and um, so my question is, uh, should, should I still go and reclaim this tax? And what exactly is the... TIN number used for at this present moment? Very few foreigners at the moment have a TIN number because it, uh, it, it's used only for people who are paying income, ties who are paying income tax and a very small number of foreigners on work permits for example, all a t uh, an Englishman say on a work permit here needs a TIN number, he has to pay tax on, on, on his income in Thailand, not on what we were talking about before, overseas income. So the TIN is the way in which the Inland Revenue identifies you, either that you owe them money or in the example you give, that they owe you money. You can claim back in some circumstances which you would either know about if it affects you or not know about it if it doesn't. And uh, this, all that the Inland Revenue are saying is more people might need to do a fill in a form, uh, fill in a tin, get a tin number in future. Once you've got one in answer to your question, I understand it, it survives you for life. So the same tin number that you last used in 1928, they could still trace you today. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you necessarily need a, a tin number, but it, it's probably best most people go down to the tax office and get the tax back because if certainly if they've got 800,000 in the bank uh, they can reclaim a few thousand baht every year and, and also I think you can you, you, you just supply 
uh, details of your bank account uh, and you can go up to about a year in arrears to reclaim this money. Okay, okay fine. Yeah. You, you think it's quite a good idea? Yes, I do. First of all, thank you, Barry. Another informative briefing. Appreciate it. I very foolishly forgot or didn't ask for a re-entry permit on my last upgrade or update of my retirement visa. Now we're going on a trip which will include uh, Galicine province. Uh, will the immigration in Galicine give me a, or likely give me a re-entry visa? Yes, normally you need to do uh, uh, things um, at your local immigration office but actually officially the um, form to do the re-entry permit should be able to be done at any uh, immigration office but I think I'd take with me to Callasin wherever you're sleeping there if you are and just explain the problem can also of course get a re-entry permit at the airport or some airports Savannah Boom claimed to be open 24 hours but whether, whether all immigration officers operate what I've just said, I wouldn't know. But in theory, you should be able to do that particular function at any immigration office. I think uh, the people up uh, uh, Just a comment. Uh, we own a condo for more than a long time. And our condo office, when we come in, we give them our passport. They make a copy of it. And they send, unbeknownst how they do it, but I've never had a trouble. That's my TM30. Just got my 90-day report. No comebacks on not having it in my passport. Because yeah, the condo are clearly doing, it, doing it online for you, the TM30, which is hard to do yourself, I think. Well, I would encourage you to ask your condo if they will send in your uh, arrival message, if you want to call it that. Good. Some do, some don't, of course. We got a couple of questions. Uh, first, a comment, kind of funny. I went to did my 90 day last week, and as I was at the counter, I noticed the sign that said you could do this online. And I pointed at the sign and asked the lady, I said, can I do this online? And I quote, she said, no, no, it worked, it no work sometime. <laughs> what I said, isn't it? So they're very aware. They managed it. They're very aware. <laughs> That their system is only She probably sometimes. wasn't an immigration officer either. She was one right. of the civilians I referred to before. Right. So my, my, but my first question is, I just read that they're looking at increasing the fees for the single entry and multi-entry stamps now to 6,000 and 22,000 baht. Have you heard anything about that? I think, I think what you're referring to there is something slightly different. It's foreign embassies of Thailand subject to certain uh, guidance can charge what they like for the services including <coughs> visas of different types to come to Thailand and the one in New, New Zealand has raised it as you say to 22,000 for this and see the others don't seem to have followed suit but you know it's speculation but it's not about here it's about foreign embassies and their st charging structures uh, which uh, uh, they're allowed some discretion and so far, only one embassy has announced those changes you've just referred to. Okay. And then also, if you are here on an O visa, and at the, at the end, you, you leave Thailand before the end, before it expires, uh, and you're out of the country, when you come back, are you eligible again for the uh, visa on arrival and then the 90-day... No, it's not the visa on arrival, it's visa exempt. You, 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 leave, you leave Thailand and you don't have a re-entry permit to, to protect a visa, then when you come back, you're eligible, as you say, for 30 days, visa exempt. So again. you only need to be out of the country one day past the expiration? Doesn't matter, 10 minutes will do. You could just go to the Cambodian border and do the same thing and be and in Cambodia you, 10 are, minutes. Are minutes. you eligible again for that 90 day, the way uh, that you well, have you a temporary 90 day and then the you, one year? Well, you have to apply for 90 days. They don't give them automatically. So you could apply again in Thailand for the O to lead to a retirement visa. But you, you never get 90 days just like that unless you're a Russian coming into Thailand to give them 90 days. You never, it's 30, it's 30 days, always 30 for you. Unless you have a visa in advance, uh, it'll always be the same. 
Sorry, I just wanted to come back to the TM30. I think one way out, as I understood it, if you go to another province and you have not go, cannot come here to Pattaya to your local immigration office, you just go to a cheap hotel and they will do the DM30 for you and then you are free, you are in the country. Is this right? I understood it like this, yes. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Um, th I didn't quite grasp the point. I'm sorry to be a bit thick. Can someone restate it? In a microphone. You go to a cheap hotel in the province where you enter from Laos, in Karasin, for example, and the hotel will make the TM30 for you, and then you have done it, and then you're out. I understand it like this. And no. you have not to come back to Pattaya because sometimes from Karasin is 10 hours, so uh, uh, it's a long way. Well. So it's maybe better to do it with a cheap hotel for 500 baht and you have it done. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the address you give to an immigration officer on entering the country is, is not valid once you move from that address, whether it's within Kalasin or go somewhere else. The purpose of the TM30 is to say where you slept last night, not where you necessarily slept on the first night you came into Thailand. Um, hello, and thank you for coming. Um, this is my first time watching you speak. Um, I have a question and a word of caution for everybody. I travel on occasion. I'm on a long visa to Cambodia, Laos with my motorcycle and come back. Within the last year, I've had my, uh, even here in Jomtien, I've had my long-term visa stamped incorrectly on the return, which can be quite serious. At one point, they screwed it up down here near um, the border with Cambodia, and you got to drive all the way back if you don't catch it right then. Just last week, I had my new passport stamps transferred, and I went the next day to get a residency certificate, and she had stamped my long-term visa wrong as well. So I think it's common sense, but make sure you look at that stamp after you come back through. And my question, the yellow book, what's it entail to get the yellow book? The yellow book, the yellow book simply, uh, by the way, that's very good advice. Always check your, uh, you, what they've done when you come in at the airport or the border post. If it's wrong, it can be sometimes troublesome to correct. Not always, but if you check, get it on the spot, you're okay. The question about the yellow book. The yellow book is really the nearest thing there is for a, 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 a foreigner uh, having a sort of permanent residence in inverted commas. It's not a legal thing. And you can apply for it uh, uh, to City Hall or the local bureaucracy, whatever it is, it's not always City Hall, it can be the district office if it's in Naklo. Um, and you have to provide certain documentation about your address and referees and, and pay money and so on. It's, pretty, it's not that useful and you get a pink card as well, which uh, you can use in immigration for some purposes. But not every purpose, it can't be used if you're renewing your driving mm -hmm. license, for example. But I think in a meeting like this, you look up Yellow Book on the internet, you'll find all the details there. I just went into the office and got my 90 days. And I used to be able to just walk in, they did something with the passport, and I walk out. But now I need to like three copies from my passport and I have to fill out a form. Do you know what they do with all this paper? Do they ever use it? I don't tell you what they do with it. <laughs> That's the new computer system, by the way. It requires uh, you to turn up or do it online. You can't anymore use it with a barcode, which I covered earlier. But what they do with it, oh, don't ask questions like that. Barry? Barry. Question. My extension of stay runs out on 1st of May this year. I leave Thailand, I'm going away and I'll be, I leave about 38 days before it uh, expires, which is beyond the 30 days uh, that you can do your renewal. I actually get back on 30 April, which is the day before my extension of stay expires. So if I rock down and jumped in on 1st of May, is that still legit and get 12 well, months ahead? Well, you, ne you, never, you never said uh, what sort of visa you're on, oh, so oh. I can't make any sense of it. Oh, uh, uh, for long term, uh, retirement. You've got a retirement visa. Retirement visa, okay. right. Well, you can renew the retirement visa 30 days in advance, if that's any good, or even longer, two months if you need, and save yourself worrying about you know, where you're going, going to go on April the 1st or whatever it was. Oh, do, so it, do it before, <coughs> if you can. 
So I, I was told by immigration it was 30 days that there's a jump to you. 30 days, but they'll sometimes extend it. For example, somebody only yesterday had an air ticket to Timbuktu and, and they use that as a reason to get more than 30 days. Magic. That's a negotiating matter with the officer, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. So I have, uh, the airlines have been informing people for some time that the use of TM30 has been discontinued. The standard practice was that they gave you a TM30 form at, on the aircraft. You took it to the immigration, they stamped it and stapled it to your passport. But for some time now, they are not giving those TM30 forms. The, custom, the immigration is not insisting on it. Even the hotels which used to require TM30 are not asking for it. I was told that the use has been discontinued in recent times. So you're mixing up, I'm afraid, the TM30 and the TM6. The TM6 was a small card they used to give out on the aeroplane. You filled in and gave the officer when you arrived. Nothing to do with the TM30 at all. That TM6 was abolished because it never was a lot of use anyway. You wrote your address in Thailand on it, but it was only a scroll signature nobody could read anyway. So they got rid of it, though it is still in use if you come into Thailand by a border post. The TM6 is different as cheese and chalk from the TM30. Okay, uh, now most of the questions answered, but we still have a little bit of time. Uh, just to elaborate or add some additional information to Barry's presentation, but the, uh, and also remember, if you go to the immigration, se Thai immigration section on our webpage, you will find a lot of this information. So, but as an example, uh, Barry was talking about the uh, change of the civil people there, that are civilians that are working who may not be totally knowledgeable. And that also may be sometimes the case of the immigration officer. But for example, the online appointment for retirement extensions. Don't go to the main, the building B where everybody queues up because they'll tell you to get in line. Go to the main building, show them your appointment slip, and they will direct you to desk eight. And there they will tell you what you need to do. But just make sure you show them you have the appointment. But as far as I know, only the retirement desk is honoring appointments. That's current and that can always change. Uh, on the uh, discretion of the immigration offices, if you come in, if you go to Pati Immigration and you ask for, uh, to apply for your non-immigrant O visa for retirement purposes, they will require you to show that you had the 800,000 baht on deposit from outside of Thailand for at least two months. That's to get the application to get the visa. That is not in the rules. That's strictly Padilla. But I had an interesting thing happen a while back because an individual sent me a copy of the rule that was given to him by Chonbury Immigration. It looks just like the rule that you normally see on the immigration rules. And it did show that it was required to be two months in advance. I sent the person back the rule from the main immigration webpage, which doesn't show that information. So apparently, people had raised that issue with the, uh, maybe Chambury Immigration and somebody added that and made up their own rule form to show you, but it is required two months in advance at Chambury Immigration. I don't think any of the others are doing that. Uh, Go to our website and you'll get all of that information. Plus, we have a checklist for those that have done it in the past where you can pull down the checklist and it shows you the latest information we have for getting a retirement visa, doing the 800000 the 65000 monthly income, also for marriage visa in both cases. Also, the issue with the online reporting about the changing a passport number, yes, that did happen. We had it reported here. And I got, however, that apparently they got that corrected because I've had several reports of people who have been able to uh, register online recently, but the most important person that made that report was me. I have changed my passport since my last time to coming into Thailand, and I did my online 90-day, and I had no problem. So and apparently they do have that issue fixed. 
as to marriage visas, as Barry mentioned, a lot of retirees prefer uh, to qualify for retirement, prefer that over the marriage one because of the paperwork. But one of the things he didn't mention was that uh, one of the drawbacks to the marriage visa is if your Thai spouse, you have a divorce or you die, your uh, extension expires. So if you're on the retirement, it doesn't. The uh, employment, working, I don't know much about work permits. Don't try to keep up with it. So, but if you're an American citizen and you're wanting to start a business, look into the Treaty of Amity between the U.S. and Thailand. I know there's been several American citizens who were able to form their own companies and get a work permit and weren't required to have all the Thai employees, et cetera. Well, don't cetera. forget to use the Treaty of Amity. You need the permission of the Thai Board of Investment. That may be. I, tried it. I don't know. They appear again. They're I don't know the requirements, but I do know some people that have looked into it and been able to it's, do it. it. You can, but it's complex. Right. Uh, as far as the long-term retirement, uh, long-term resident visa and the various purposes, they do have a retirement as a purpose in which the income has to be at least 80000 U.S. dollars per year to qualify. Uh, I can meet that requirement, but the problem is they also require proof of health insurance. And although I do have the health insurance coverage here, in order to, for me to show proof, I can't because they wanted my embassy to certify it, and the U.S. Embassy will not do that. And uh, Thai for uh, this new Thai thing, Barry is absolutely right. Wait and see. We don't really know. I'm, if anything comes up that's official or I feel reliable, it will be posted in our newsletter. I can tell you that at least under the uh, dual taxation treaty for the U.S., as Barry mentioned, Social Security for U.S. citizens is specifically exempt. Also, retirement of federal and I think even uh, government employees is also exempt, specifically mentioned. And I know that because that's my pension that comes from the government. So I will not be, or I will be exempt on that. But uh, other pensions could be. But like I said, wait and see because they haven't given out any idea of what, first of all, what you will have to do, how you will report it, or anything else. But as soon as we get that information from a reliable source, I will post it in the newsletter. And uh, thank you, Daryl. And uh, by the way, uh, Daryl does an unbelievable job with the website trying to keep the information up to date. It's an incredibly valuable resource. A round of applause for Daryl. The newsletter's great. Uh, we are at Oh, no. Uh, is it a quick one? Because we are starting to run short of time here. It relates to what he just said. I recently renewed my one-year extension, and <clears throat> I had a service do it. And I gave them my bank book, passport, et cetera. They came back after a couple of days and said, well, immigration didn't like the fact that I didn't have a whole year's worth of uh, entries in my bank book because I, I left and went to America for like eight months. So there was a gap in there. They wanted to go back to the bank and get a statement from the bank showing everything throughout the whole year and I couldn't do that myself because they only let you do six months from the internet. And that took, you know, a couple, three days with the bank. And I thought, well, how come I didn't know that? Because it doesn't say that anywhere, I don't think. Has anybody else experienced that? I, I've heard of that where they, they, they want to know what, what the hell you're living off, basically, that you're sort of having a legitimate uh, life here. Okay, if you look at our checklist, it's on our website, it does comment that if you're using the 800,000 bot, you have to show proof to the uh, immigration that for the past year before you go renew your extension, that it was at 800,000 for three months, at 400,000 up to two months before, and back to 800,000. And no, they will not take gaps in your deal. Uh, you know, they want to see everything, and you can get statements they will accept the statements from your uh, from your bank. And true, six months is what most of the banks do. You can get 12 months, but you have to give them about five to seven days 
for the bank to order it from their headquarters. At least that's the way with Bangkok Bank. Because I have to show when I do the 65,000 month monthly income for my extension, and I have to give them a separate letter listing all of my deposits from uh, outside of Thailand into my bank account. And in order to get that, I have to go to the Bangkok Bank, have them get me a 12-month statement because I don't keep my bank book up to date. And they give me the 12-month statement. Then from that statement, they prepare the letter for me. So that, yes, you can get it, and you will have to show proof from your bank if your bank book has not been kept up to date. All right, well, thank you for such a comprehensive, amazing, I'm talking to you. <laughs> thank you for such an amazingly comprehensive talk on uh, overview, it was amazing. Thank you, Barry. That were really, it's, it's so good of you to come and share all your insights and stuff with us, so thank you very much. Uh, and of course, this talk will be put up on our YouTube channel, PCEC uh, YouTube channel, so and many, many interesting talks from the past are up there as well. Uh, and um, including the most hit talk on the, ever watched on PCEC, which is about the tax thing uh, by Thomas Carden, gave a, an update, a very good 40 minute talk on what could be happening. And his advice too was don't panic. <laughs> so.